Praise God. It's Sunday again. Well, it's Sunday without an audience. I just want to greet you and encourage you before I go to share what God has put upon my heart. And I just want to, to encourage you to tune in on Wednesday. Micah did a phenomenal job on sharing about stress and the fear. So please, if you have not listened to that video, I encourage you to go ahead and listen. It will bless your heart. Emma, you know, she did a great job on teaching on how to worship. If you can listen to Emma every Saturday, she's actually a professor at um, a Buff State. She's lecturing there. So Dr. Emma is going to be sharing with you on the importance of worship. She's going to make you understand. Sister Lynette, also who is leading us on intercession. And Brother Lon, on Friday morning, uh, we have men's prayer. So we're trying to keep you busy. And Friday evening, we have also men's prayer. And the Lynette is going to be having intercession and the worship. So there's a lot that is going on here at Home City Church trying to connect you to what is happening. We don't want to leave you alone there without realizing what God is doing. The question that everybody has in the mind and they're asking is about this corona. What is it? Where did it come from? Why now? Is it a prey? According to the definition that I've been giving for the past two weeks of what a plague looks like, there are all indications that this is a, can be a plague. But there's also one thing that I want to encourage you, that the Bible is filled with the promises of God, and that God will never let his children suffer beyond what they can control or manage. If you read the Bible from the book of Genesis to Revelation, we read of normal people that received the promises of God. These promises are sealed by the highest authority, God's word. And as you continue to study the word of God, you'll find, for when God made promises to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he saw by himself. Now imagine this, that God took a moment to swear to himself alone because there was no one greater to swear. That means God, he is the beginning and the ending. With him, there's no beginning, there's no ending. He makes things, he can speak things to be where he wants them to be and he can remove them. Even this coronavirus is nothing to our God. But <clears throat> When you begin to look at the 10 plagues that were there in the Bible, there's some similarities here that we begin to say, what is going on here, God? Things that are happening, is this a coincidence or happenstance? The Bible says, then the Lord said to Moses, God of Pharaoh, and said to him, this is what the Lord, the God of Hebrews says, let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go and they continue to hold them back, the hand of the Lord will bring a terrible plague on your livestock and in, your, in the field on your horses and donkeys and camels and your cattle and the sheep and the gods. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and that of Egypt. I want you to underline that word. You begin to see where God is making the distinction between the livestock of Israel and that of Egypt, so that no animal belonging to the Israelites will die. What does this tell you? God is making distinctions and trying to warn us, you know, that we need to understand the importance of redemption. And it's such a point that is so crucial like this one. 
that God, as we tend to him, there are distinctions. Now, I want you to understand me. There are a number of people here that are grieving. They have lost the good, good people. They have lost the parents. They have lost the families. They have lost the fathers and mothers and on something that they never chose, uncles, nephews, and everything. This coronavirus is devilish. But I also want to let you know, you who is still alive and well, it's time for us to say, God, let me apply the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. God, let me allow God to protect me and my family. It's a tragedy that we have lost loved ones. But also God is giving us this chance, us who are still alive, to make our mind right. The Lord said a time and said, tomorrow the Lord will do this in the land. And the next day the Lord did it. All the livestock of Egyptian died, but not one animal belonging to the Israelites died. Pharaoh set men to investigate and found that not even one of the animals of the Israelites had died. Mm -hmm. Yet his heart was unyielding. Mm -hmm. Here's what is happening. This man is hardening his heart. You know, most of the time when people, they harden their hearts, they get themselves in tragedy. They get themselves in difficult situations. He would not let the people go. God had already removed the supply of fish. Now there would be no red meat or milk. This targeted the God of Apis. Now, the Egyptians felt when Apis was well, the livestock was well. Sometime, what is it that, that you adore more than God? What is it that, that you magnify more than the word of God? What is it that you exalt, you, you worship it more than God? This plague affected horses, donkeys, camels, cattle, and sheep. All these animals were essential to the life in Egypt. Cattle especially were seen as a symbol of wealth. What is this coronavirus doing worldwide is touching the wealth of a nation, decimating mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. destroying. And we see the similarity whereby in the time in Egypt when there was these plagues, there were the wealth of the nation of Israel was being attacked. And we see right now most of Things that are hot, the airlines that are hot, businesses, most of them are hot. Things, schools, colleges are hot. Miraculously, no one of the Hebrew livestock were harmed. What was the reason? I want to encourage you that it's important to understand the blood of Jesus. At the beginning of the year, I share about the importance of the blood of Jesus. A friend called me in the middle of the night and told me, to repeat the blood of Jesus for 30 minutes. And to me at that moment, it never made sense. But today when I look at it, I begin to realize that there was an important significance on what God was trying to encourage me to do at that moment. It's because the only thing that can protect us in this time is the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. No other blood, but the blood of Jesus. Not the blood of the donkeys, not the mm. blood of the bulls, not the blood of the lambs or the sheep, not the blood of any other animal, but the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. the, now, Pharaoh even sent men to investigate, but his heart remained hardened. Saints, or oh brethren out there, do not allow your heart to be hardened. These mm. are very dangerous times. Here are some courts some of these people spoke about. I had one court one time from Bob Murray. He was a reggae musician. I don't know whether it's going to make sense to you. He said these words. He says, better die fighting for freedom than be a prisoner all the days of your life. Well, what is the freedom that we need? There's no freedom out there in the exception. Your freedom is found in Jesus Christ. The Bible in literally tells us that be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. 
for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So God is warning us here to be courageous. Also, we begin to see something in the book of Joshua where God will speak through him to encourage the people of Israel to not be discouraged, to not be afraid. God is was with them wherever they went. In the middle of the storm, he was right there. This coronavirus is a storm. Mm -hmm. This coronavirus is devastating the lives of the people. But I want to encourage you, our God will forever be there for us as we depend on the blood of Jesus. You can go to the hospital, nothing will happen if you do not depend on the blood of Jesus. You can call any other name other than the name of Jesus. Nothing will happen. You know, some of us, we have families that work in the hospitals. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we are praying for them mm -hmm. daily. Mm -hmm. My wife, mm -hmm. she works in the hospital. I'm praying for her every day. You know, we have friends. We have people that we know. But I want to let you know that the most important thing is to understand what God is doing. Freedom, mm. that's what Ronald Reagan said one time. He says, the former president of the United States, he says, freedom prospers when religion is vibrant mm. and the rule of law under God is acknowledged. Well, here it is. There we go. We are looking for the freedom. But how do we find the freedom? This man who one time was the president of this nation said these words, the lure of law under God is acknowledged. So if that is important, how much more will be the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience, from dead works to save the living God. Amen. So it's important to understand what God is trying to show us. It is difficult to free fools from the chains they revere. That's how one man by the name of Walter said. But he know it's important also to understand what the word of God says. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strength, and settle you. God will settle you in the midst of all these calamities. Coronavirus is just a name, and that name is underneath the feet of Jesus. True freedom is the freedom that for one's own interaction and spiritual pursuit. What are you pursuing today? When God makes a promise to his people, it will come to pass. What is a promise? A promise is a covenant, an mm -hmm. agreement, mm -hmm. a declaration that one will do exactly what they say mm -hmm. or something will happen just as praised. And God made the promises to us. Mm -hmm. He said these words to Abraham, in the Bible, it says, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of martyred of nations. So Abraham, it was fulfilled. He became the father of martyred, and that promise, that covenant, that agreement, that declaration is up to this time. When God spoke to Abraham, he declared that he would bless him and then make him a father of many nations. This is exactly what we see throughout the Bible history. What is God saying? As we continue to call upon the blood of Jesus, there is going to be the divine protection. And also God reminds us, God hid their drowning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham. With Isaac and with Jacob, God saw the people of Israel and God knew during these plagues, the time when they were suffering in Egypt, <clears throat> God hid their drowning. Mm -hmm. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob. I want to encourage you, dear friends, dear uh, 
partners, homesick church members, wherever you are, God is hearing our grounding, mm -hmm. our prayers, the people that we are praying that God restore them from this coronavirus. And God saw the people of Israel and God knew. Here's one thing that I want you to understand. One of the greatest promises God made in history was the deliverance of his people from Egyptian mm -hmm. slave. Mm -hmm. You are going to be delivered or you are being delivered right now. And God would call a man by the name of Moses to declare to follow that it was time for his people to be set free. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. God is calling somebody is listening to the voice of God and is going to declare, I'm not a prophet and I don't claim to be a prophet and I don't plan to be a prophet. I'm just a preacher. I'm just an encourager. I, I'll just do what God says through his word. But if Pharaoh, when he didn't take God's word serious and the effect was catastrophic, how many people today, they hear the word of God and you are not taking it serious. That's why we're seeing this pandemic the dangers that are going around the world. Why? It's because people, they're hardened. Can it be this is the time of redemption? <clears throat> Can it be this is the time when we're going to have the relationship with one another? And to say we have the relationship with God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit? Can it be this is the time after the end of this pandemic known as coronavirus, we are going to have our souls, our spirit, refreshing the way we're going to say, this is the time of God. I strongly believe there is a revival that is coming after this pandemic. And the reason why this revival is going to be there is because God have heard your cries, my cries, and everybody's cry around the world. This is not a pandemic. This was started somewhere in China there, whatever the name is. <clears throat> but now it has spread all over the whole world. It's all over the whole world and it cannot be denied. So we cannot blame one person and it's becoming catastrophic. Only through the blood of Jesus can we see the total deliverance on the lives of a people. We read of the main plagues God sent in Egypt that laid foul in the end to release God's people only to regret it and to cause more problem for his armies. The nation of Israel crossed the Red Sea and was set free after 430 years of slavery. Here are the people that has been in bondage. Here are the people that has been enslaved. <clears throat> they forgot that they were the promises. They had a covenant with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But they chose to go their, their own ways. Sometimes when we harden our hearts, it's important to repent. It's important when God confounds us. Let's bow our feet and acknowledge, bow our heads, and let's kneel before the Lord and to tell him, God, we are sorry. The Lord who established us as his holy people, as he promised in his oath, if we keep the commands of the Lord, our God, and walk in obedience to him, he will set us free. God made promises to the nations of Israel that if they kept these commandments, he would bless them abundantly. How many are ready after this coronavirus as we come and acknowledge who God is and just bow before him and say, you are worthy of all the blessings. And then we see how God will bless his people abundantly. And if they would obey or if we would obey his word and truth, he would set as high above all the nations of the earth. God is able to do mighty things. There are people here that are only set up by God that are going to be completely blessed and exalted and they'll be lifted beyond measure because of what God is doing. 
the word of God tells us to be strong and be courageous, not to be afraid, not to be discouraged, for the Lord our God will be with us wherever we go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why is God going to be with us? He told Joshua this, those same words. In the book of Joshua, God would speak through him to encourage the people of Israel not to be discouraged or to be afraid. God was with them wherever they went, wherever they were going. In the middle of the storm, he was right there. In the middle of the wilderness, the days that he was right there. When there was no food in the wilderness, he provided the manna. When there was no water, he provided everything. Our God is able. The Lord sees our grief. The Lord sees our pain. That's why he said to follow, let my people go. Mm -hmm. Now God is acknowledging us to say, let us go. Let devil leave my people. All the trials, all the traps, all the setups, all the works of the enemy, all the traps that the devil has laid. There is a day that mm -hmm. the devil is going to pay those and he'll pay it heavily. Mm -hmm. Stay steady fast. If you have stumbled, acknowledge God, be restored, repent, mm -hmm. come unto the Lord, for he is faithful and just. Mm -hmm. He will set you free. He is able to do that. The Lord has done his part and he fulfilled the word, but he is waiting for you and I so that we can acknowledge who he is. I'm doing my part. I wonder if you are doing your part. Um, my family is doing their part. Um, my wife and I, we are doing our part. I'm encouraging our brothers here at Home City Church to do their part. This is the reason why Jesus Christ, he shed his precious blood by paying the full price, the full price, you know, when you read in the book of Revelation, I love it. He says, Behold, I stand at the door. God now is standing at the door through Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and he's knocking. If any man hears his voice and open that door, he will come in and he will eat with you, and he'll be with you. God, at this time of coronavirus, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's the description. We are all listening to the news from the scientists, but I know something that is above science is the word of God. Before science was there, there was a God who saw by himself because there was no one greater than him. And as we wait and listen to this God, we are going to see the power of God. What is our purpose in life as the people of God? Have you ever asked yourself such kind of question? What is my purpose for me as a child of God, as a Christian, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to help my neighbors? How am I supposed to help those who are struggling, who are stumbling, those who are falling? Am I supposed to bury them and they castigate them and they leave them breathing, dying on the Jericho Road? Or am I supposed to go there and revive them like that good old Samaritan? patch them up and lift them and say, I'm with you and take them to the nearest clinic and help. There are people there that would desire to see you dead and never mention the word of God. Shame unto you. But there are people so that out there, they desire to see the revival, the heart of God. They'll go. There are people that are feeding people. There are people that are providing the equipment. Let's pray for those that rule over us so that th we can live a tranquility to life, so that we can be at peace in these difficult times. What is our purpose individually? Have you asked yourself during this coronavirus? Is it not just to come to church and to feel good by easing our conscience? Well, God is showing us that this time when churches around the world are empty, but God, he is still evolved. He is still alive and well, and he's encouraging us to understand. There are things that we always need to keep in mind. 
always be mindful that if you live right, you die right. And you, you are what God says you are in his word. And that's what settles it. I am who I am in Jesus Christ's image. And that settles it. It never changes. And they never forget your purpose in this life. What is your purpose? Maybe you have been running away from God. And God has brought this. Nobody is not shaken with this coronavirus. We need to understand what God is doing. Save the most I God with all that you are. For a man cannot save two masters. Mm -hmm. Anytime you move upstream towards the will of God, you will always encounter resistance from the evil that is sufficient and contrary to, to you to hinder you from doing what God is doing. But I want to let you know, those that are strong, go ahead and encouraging those that are feeble and weak. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26, they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Who is that one taking people captive? I believe in this generation, in this time, this day in March, I believe it's coronavirus. Fear is a human emotion that is triggered by perceived threat. And our spirits are threatened. Fear prepares us to react to danger. We are now reacting to danger. That's why there is a social distancing. People, they are not supposed to be nearby each other. There is quarantine, which I call cleansing. Fear weakens our immune and it can cause cardiovascular damage. There are people here where the hearts are panting day and night and they can't even settle. Fear can impair Formation of long-term memories and it can cause damage to certain parts of the brain. You know, people that have had mild stroke or these other things, the doctor will tell you that there are some nerves that are being damaged into your brain or anything. There are some of the things I know what I'm talking about, but I want to let you know only Jesus Christ of Nazareth can repair everything that has been damaged. I understand I, I was one time a victim of this. Fear holds people hostage. And who are the captive? Captives, they are hostage. Coronavirus is holding people hostage. A hostage is someone who is deprived of privilege, of power and of freedom. And we know how things are happening. Ours, my family and I, were supposed to have traveled in May, like I said. Our our airlines were canceled. We cannot travel. We are not even at a liberty to travel. Even if they were to tell us today to travel, we can't go in those planes with a, a normal conscience. We'll be asking ourselves, what is happening? Why? Because of the coronavirus. I was supposed, I was scheduled just in May to be in four different countries, but I couldn't be because of this coronavirus. Hostage is not dead, but is just powerless. You are a hostage. You are not dead, but you are powerless. A hostage is not accessible. A hostage is bound a prison. The people of Israel were hostage. Right now, we are held hostage with this coronavirus. That's what this coronavirus has done to the people worldwide. Everywhere is holding people hostage. But I want to let you know, you need the blood of Jesus. And yet there was a drawing, pulling them towards God, towards freedom. The blood of Jesus is pulling us towards freedom, number one, towards hope, number two, towards life. There was a drawing pulling them to go on the place their God, wherever you are in your home today. That's why Emma James has put those worship music. Please take some time to worship. Mm -hmm. Magnify mm -hmm. the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Praise him. Worship when we just bow before the Lord and just worship God, there is something that it does. It brings the presence of God 
And then the presence of the enemy that brings fear, it departs from us. The, we, be, we are hosted. But I want to let you know something today that the Jesus liberates through his precious blood that he died on the cross. Jesus lets us go. The devil is trying to hold us in hostage, but apply the blood of Jesus. Let my people go. Mm -hmm. Let them praise me. Hallelujah. The enemy, the holy about task master, just tightens the strongholds. Oh, but Jesus was not stopped trying to set his people free. You are being set free right now. Mm -hmm. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Why? Because it's not enough to just to live, exist, exist. We must have life and live it more abundantly. The people of God are being held hostage. They are not able to live. But I want to let you know today that we can live life so abundantly. So God made a way where there is no way so that we can be set free. And our God, our Lord, is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I love, in conclusion, I want to say this. Matthew told us something. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and all that are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and lean of me, for I am meek and lower in heart, and you shall find rest, your soul. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Praise be to God. Amen. Maybe today you are afraid. I shared that at the beginning of the year with the, the members of Home City Church how to call the blood of Jesus because a friend called me in the middle of the night and said, David, I want us to say the blood of Jesus. At that moment, it was foolish. It was useless. He called me from out of the country. I never understood why he wanted. After that, the, it was a number of things that happened, and I started realizing I really needed the blood of Jesus. But the more I look into it right now, I see the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. with this mm -hmm. coronavirus mm -hmm. that people, they need the blood of Jesus. And I just want to say to you, wherever you are, whatever you are doing today, whatever you are doing, when you jump in your car, speak the blood of Jesus. When you are in your house, speak the blood of Jesus. When you are walking in the highways, in the byways, when you are taking a walk during daytime strolling, speak the blood of Jesus. Whatever you are doing, speak the blood of Jesus. When you're free, apply the blood of Jesus in your hand. Always pray for your hand, the blood of Jesus. Speak the blood of Jesus to your nostrils. Speak the blood of Jesus to your mouth. That little virus that I don't know on a scientist they can see it, tries to penetrate you. It'll burn through the blood of Jesus. Declare the blood of Jesus. And I just wanted to encourage you, Home City Church, or those who are listening to me, wherever you are, whichever the part of the world you are right now, across the world, say this word, the blood of Jesus. 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 When the devil sees the blood of Jesus, he passes by. Claude Violas, when he sees the blood of Jesus, he passes by. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of Jesus. We pray for the blood of Jesus in the hospitals. We pray for the blood of Jesus in the restaurants. Oh God, where people they drive through. We pray for the blood of Jesus to the police officers. We pray for the blood of Jesus to the doctors, the nurses, all the emergency, the first respondent. We pray the blood of Jesus to the leaders of this nation and our worldwide. We pray the blood of Jesus, oh God, to everyone who is listening to this word, the blood of Jesus. We pray the blood of Jesus to all the pastors. We pray pray the blood of Jesus to our family members. We pray the blood of Jesus to everyone around the world that is affected. 
We plead the blood of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus be without measure mm -hmm. on your family, on your household. Do not let resentment, anger, bitterness, jealousy, strife hinder you from the blood of Jesus. Marriage, gossip, slander, wrong, suspicious thoughts come around you to hinder you from the blood of Jesus. Do not allow anything to come in between you and the blood of Jesus. Be purified. Allow the blood of Jesus to be all over you now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Shalom, shalom.